saying. Thank you. Okay, the audio is being recorded. I'll hit got it and then begin the meeting. Okay, uh, welcome as we uh, call to order our 2001 annual meeting. Uh, welcome and uh, thanks for joining us, giving up part of your beautiful day today and joining us in celebrating our 70th year uh, of the uh, Wealthy Historical Society Museum. Started in 1952. I did the math. I'm, uh, I'm John Connors, for those of you who don't know, and have the privilege of being the president of the very capable board of directors and in, in museum staff. And as you can see, our meeting venue has changed from the country club uh, to Zoom once again. Um, it was our intention to put everybody under a great big tent in the back lawn of the museum and get a chance to show everybody around um, about what we've been able to accomplish with your help and support. Um, but alas, uh, we, weren't, uh, we weren't able to do that. Not yet, not this year. Um, so in lieu of that, thanks to our, uh, our board member and building committee member, Robin Parkinson, we, are, we offer this uh, interesting video. It's a five minute short video. And I think you'll find it very interesting. If we could go ahead and run that now, Jennifer, that would be. Sure. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves for the video because um, it's running like through the computer and through my computer speakers, and so I want to make sure everybody's able to hear it. So if you all can go ahead and mute yourselves while I run the video. Give me one sec. Welcome to the Wellfleet Historical Society Annual Meeting. Here is a quick five minute review of where we want to go in our efforts to preserve and celebrate Wellfleet's heritage. Organized in 1951, WHSM collects and exhibits the material culture and historical record of the town of Wellfleet and provides a library and archives to facilitate research, education, and outreach to the community. WHSM's collection includes more than 2,000 objects and 1,200 photographs reflecting the lives and history of the town and citizens of Wellfleet. WHSM occupies a prominent site on Wellfleet's Main Street. 266 Main Street, the original museum. In recent years, WHSM acquired two additional properties along Wellfleet's Main Street. 258 Main Street, purchased in 2007, and 262 Main Street, purchased in 2012. We've started combining them. We've demolished and rebuilt or stabilized several parts of the buildings. We've hired professionals and have an approved plan and budget for converting these structures into a safe, engaging, and informative community museum. The work to date has been paid in full thanks to generous donations from members and friends. In addition, the town of Wellfleet has contributed a $350,000 grant. The Massachusetts Cultural Council has contributed $200,000. We are on our way, but we need your help. Help us grow. There's much work to be done. Here's what we now need to do inside. Make the newly combined building safe and accessible for everyone. Provide spaces for display, storage, and other museum functions. How to best tell Wellfleet's story in this new space? Organize exhibit segments that truly reflect Wellfleet's history. 
organize exhibits to best use the resources of our collection, create an engaging flow for visitors going from segment to segment, room to room through the museum. Three floors, third level, staff and storage, second level, the residents of Wellfleet, first level, work and play in Wellfleet. First level, work and play in Wellfleet, featuring Wellfleet Arts and Crafts, a museum shop, life-saving and maritime Wellfleet, Second level, the residents of Wellfleet, featuring Wellfleet's attic, the faces of Wellfleet, and Wellfleet's movers and shakers. Excitement is building. For our estimated budget of $1.5 million, we can connect all three buildings, create accessible and welcoming entrances, add ADA compliant public spaces, restrooms and elevator, add climate controlled storage, enhance the museum shop, establish a maintenance fund, We thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I suggest we all unmute now, or at least I will. So, um, listen, um, this uh, video is, a, is available on YouTube, and we'll be updating this information piece as we, uh, as we uh, progress on our, our building project. Um, so thank you, Robin. And I also take this opportunity to uh, say thank you to the, uh, and the board wants to thank the, uh, the great volunteers we have, the docents and the volunteers and the wonderful staff that's keeping this museum uh, such a welcoming place on Main Street. So we say thank you so much. Without you guys, none of this would be possible at all. So uh, again, thank you. So as you can see from the agenda, if you got one, uh, we have to go to the a little business, brief business section here. And the, so there's two pieces of it. And the first one, I'm, I'm making a, uh, a motion to welcome Lauren Smith, Ted Thomas, and Irving Puffer as new members of our board of directors. May I have a second for that? All in favor, raise your hands. All, all opposed? I see no opposition, that, that passes. Uh, happy to have you all on board. Looking forward to working with you. The second motion I'm making is for the um, reinstatement of board members, Brad Williams, Eric Winslow, and John Connors. Do I have a second on that? Second. All in favor, raise your hands, please. All opposed, I see no opposition. The business is done and thank you, well done members. We move on now at this point in the program to uh, our presentation. And our first of four speakers will be our extremely dedicated secretary, Bill, to uh, Bill Carlson, to uh, inform us about membership and uh, capital campaign, the upcoming capital campaign. Bill, if you would be so kind. Thank you, John. Uh, hi, everybody. Um... I'm the secretary and one of the jobs that I have is 
all things relating to membership. So what I need to tell you is very short and uh, good news basically. And that is despite COVID, despite of everything else, we have a very loyal and generous membership that comes back year after year renewing their membership. And uh, we're pretty much at the same levels of renewals as, as we have been over the past four or five years. So um, the numbers are you know, roughly 250, uh, although we're not there yet, we'll probably get there by the end of the uh, fiscal year, which is our uh, annual membership uh, year. Um, so this good news on the membership front, membership continues strong and we are grateful to all of you. Um, the second thing about membership I wanted to mention was that as you probably are aware, we revised our membership categories uh, this spring, uh, broadening them to appeal to a, to a broader range of people who might be able to support us. Um, the interesting thing about that is that we created a new membership category of membership associate, um, which is kind of the top of the line membership. Um, it, this was an experiment that is turning out quite well. We actually have five uh, members who joined at that level, uh, which is very nice. And um, if I find them, I would like to let you know who they are because you should know. Um, these are people who support us to the tune of $1,000 a year. And that's Jamie Gorlick, Robert Johnson, Janet and Ted Thomas, Moo and Judy Peel, and Emily O'Connell. So thank you very much. Um, that's the end of part one. Uh, as you may have gathered from the video that uh, Robin put together so well, um, we now have a very ambitious project to finish this museum, which we have cobbled together out of three parts on Main Street. And the plans are for uh, a very ambitious series of galleries and openings and we have a new rear entrance and we will have an entrance from the Wellfleet parking lot. Um, which should be going forward this summer. Uh, our timetable is subject to everything COVID, um, but we're hopeful that we might even be able to start this fall. Um, and of course, we all have to pay for this. Um, so one of the things that was going to happen today, um, but which didn't, was a social event that enabled us to talk up um, this project, which is going to be a capital campaign and we have to somehow raise a million and a half dollars. Um, I think the board is all confident that the money is out there and we just need to connect ourselves to the people who are willing to get involved with this project along with us. So what I'm going to say about the capital campaign for everyone here and for you to tell your friends is that it's coming and that, um, you know, we'll be beating the drum and getting in touch with people and holding more events as we are able. So in the meantime, if you have any questions about how this might go forward, contact any member of the board. Everybody's on board with this. Um, there are naming opportunities all over the place. Um, if, if it's time to name a gallery for your third cousin, now's the time to do it. Um, and I and everyone else will be very glad to help you with that. So um, that's basically all I have to say. I will pass you along now to the very cap capable and competent Barbara Carey, who um, stepped up willingly uh, when our treasurer, our much loved Miss Treasurer, Jake Ketchum, uh, unexpectedly disappeared to Hingham this spring. So uh, Barbara will catch us up on money. Over to you, Barbara. Well, plummeting to the bottom line, we are in good shape. Um, our 2020 financials have been reviewed by our accountant. Um, and if you'd like to have a look at those, you should let us know. We won't go over them now. Um, Currently, our year-to-date income, uh, total income, um, is outpaced a little bit by um, 
our expenses, that's going to even out because at this point, we've got about $80,000 has been spent already on um, uh, phases uh, two and three uh, planning, largely work done by our architect. Um, and when the construction begins, we will be able to draw down on the uh, grants that were mentioned in the video earlier, we've got about uh, we've got five hundred and fifty thousand dollars in grants. We will be able to reimburse ourselves for much of the expenses that uh, are leaving us a little unbalanced at the moment. I don't unbalanced maybe an accounting term. I don't want to use. The fact is, expenses a little bit ahead. Not to worry. Uh, it's important to note that all the work in the building uh, at this that's been done so far has been paid for. And our only debt is still our mortgage, which uh, balance of which right now is about $63,850. Um, and the interest rate has been adjusted from um, down. It was last year 3.29% and this year it's 3.26%. Um, bank balances as of August 20th, last week, end of last week, our operating account was 46,230 and our capital account 80, 82,484 for total cash on hand of $128,714. And that's really all I have to say. Next up is, um, Cheryl Jaffe, she's our museum coordinator, upon whose very sturdy shoulders fall not only the daily operational challenges of the museum, but a healthy bit of just about everything else, including the daunting task of wrangling the board members. Uh, Cheryl will present an overview of our programs. Where's Cheryl? I'm here. Thank Hi. you, Barbara, <laughs> and thank you, everyone, um, for being here with us today. Um, I'm Cheryl. I'm happy to be the museum coordinator. And I'm going to give you a little report about what we've been up to. Um, the biggest change that we've seen this year was reigniting our enthusiasm and responsibility for the care of our collection. Through the help of a generous member, donor, we hired a part-time curator to keep us on this track. Many of you know David Wright. I would ask him to stand up, but um, he's, <laughs> he's on Zoom. You can probably scroll down and see him. Um, many of you know David. He's been associated with the Historical Society for over 20 years, worked with former curators Helen Purcell and Joan Coughlin, and has been our chief researcher for as long as I can remember. He spearheaded the current exhibit, Collecting Wealthly, which I'm surrounded by right at this moment, and has been investigating every artifact that comes to us. He's been, an, he has an incredible memory and a passion for wealthy history. Welcome aboard, David. I wanna take a moment to shout out a great warm thank you to all of our volunteers, docents, and helpers of all kinds we would not be able to keep the museum open and running without your time and support. I hope many of you will have some time to offer us in the coming months as we work behind the scenes to improve the museum in the future. Thanks to several board members and the gardening committee, we are enjoying a beautiful landscape out front that is welcoming visitors every day. Speaking of visitors, this year alone, we welcomed the third and fifth graders over Zoom several times for specially planned lessons to fit their curriculum. The Wellfleet Recreation Department kids visited in person to investigate the railroad, the native Wampanoag exhibits, and all the fascinating artifacts the museum has to offer. Their enthusiasm was infectious. Thank you to everyone who helped with this high energy day. We also had a special envoy from the Cape Cod National Seashore, about seven folks who visited the museum and encouraged our efforts in telling the stories of Wellfleet through the exhibits. People are walking more. The word is out. The cemetery tours on Tuesday evening 
the historic downtown on Thursday and Friday mornings, and the walks with Marcus Hendricks, the Wampanoag historian and guide have been incredibly popular. Let us know what you might be interested in in the future. We hope to expand these next summer. Our speaker series has been successful even over Zoom. We appreciate your feedback and involvement in discussions about Wellfleet history, whaling, Reverend Samuel Treat, and the topic of Duck Creek archeology span that has been moved to September 22nd over Zoom. There's still time to sign up for that one. Thank you to our speakers who donate their time and expertise to bring you these wonderful speaker series. The two summer exhibits are still up and you can come and see them. Um, I'm sitting in the room right now with the Collecting Wellfleet exhibit, which has this very fascinating conglomeration of different artifacts that have come to us over the past two years. From John Mulcahy paintings to Catherine Stillman pottery to the Southern Wharf sign that you can see behind me and that beautiful reed mat. Um, the Sally exhibit, which is in the front room, is also up through the middle of October. And you can learn more about that by going to the website and tuning in to the various articles that have been written about Sally Wellfleet. <coughs> So we're still open through Labor Day on Wednesdays through Saturdays from 10 to four, and we'll be open on Saturdays after Labor Day, Saturdays only until October 16th. Now I'd like to give you to our vice president and chair of the building committee, Eric Winslow, with his many years of expertise as a builder and renovator of historic buildings, is serving the Wealthy Historical Society incredibly well. We all feel a great sense of relief knowing that Eric is overseeing this major project and caring for our buildings. Take it away, Eric. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Thanks for that kind introduction. Um, I may be repeating some of what you've seen in the video and uh, other uh, information, but uh, just to recap, we finished phase one of the work on the front of the museum in 2020. This included removal of the Mulcahy gallery on the street side and removal of the dilapidated detached shed on the back side. The facade was restored to its 19th century configuration and appearance. We hired a forensic paint analyst to ascertain the original paint colors, which you see on the museum now. We did foundation work, replaced some of the sills, reframed some of the walls, new period windows and doors were installed and landscaping and a brick patio were completed. We received permission to proceed with phase one from the state's architectural access board with the condition that we would proceed with phase two as timely as possible. Phase two will make the first and second floor of the museum entirely handicapped, uh, uh, compliant and usable for the public. This will require a 26 foot by 21 foot two-story addition on the back of the building. It will include a four stop elevator, handicapped bathrooms on both floors, a handicapped compliant kitchenette and code compliant stairs. You will be creating a welcoming lobby with access to Main Street to the back of the building on the front and uh, access to the back of the building. The access on the back will lead to a handicapped parking area at the museum and also to the stairway down to the town hall parking lot. In July, the Board of Selectmen accepted the gift of this stairway, which we will build and install on town property. It will greatly enhance the visibility and access to the museum. We will be required by the Wellfleet Fire Department to install a sprinkler system throughout. We have completed the engineering for this and this will be also done as part of the phase two. The third floor of the museum, the office area will be upgraded and a code compliance stair added there. The entire uh, museum will be insulated, heated and air conditioned, including a climate controlled archival area. And we're looking into solar panel options as well. 
The first floor of the Payne Higgins portion will provide a space for our speaker series and other events. The second floor will have workspace for our cur curator. There will be upgrades to the security and alarm systems and better management of entry to the museum. We will have gallery space to present artwork of well-pleased historical value and significance. The museum will be opened up so that one can freely travel from one end to the other and easily navigate all the changing levels. We have been working with architect Stephen Hayes and structural engineer Barnum Philbrook in developing these building plans and expect to be ready for permit application in two weeks. It will be in the style of the existing buildings and fit nicely into the architecture of the area. We have been getting cost estimates for all these components along the way to guide our design and budget planning. Much of this is expensive, particularly the sprinkler and the elevator systems, but we feel confident that with the great help from the town of Wellfleet of the $350,000 CPC funds and the Mass Cultural Council grant of 200,000, and with the continued support of our members and donors in an upcoming capital campaign, we can get this accomplished. Our goal is to raise 1.5 million with, and with help already from generous donors, we are well on our way. We had hoped to start this past spring, but building costs were out of sight, as many of you know. Fortunately, waiting seems to be paying off. For instance, the gauge of lumber prices, the random length lumber index that was almost 1,600 dollars in May and came down to $900 in July is now under $400. Wow. While over COVID, uh, overall COVID effective prices are still high, they are coming down and we think this fall will be a good time to get going with construction. Thank you again for all your support. We hope that in the next year you will see an amazing transformation of the building, the museum and all the programs we will be offering. It will be something the town of Wellesley can be, enjoy and be proud of. I'll turn it back to John. Thank you. And thank you. That was nicely done, presenters. It was very succinct, and uh, you didn't take a lot of this hot day up. So uh, nicely done, and we thank you. At this point, I'm calling for any questions, or as my eighth grade English teacher used to say, Miss Pickering, at the end of class, she'd say, are there any questions, corrections, or additions? So I'm opening the floor to anybody who has any questions about anything now before we, we end this meeting. Hearing none, I, um, I, know, I now go to the traditional closing, call for a close to the meeting. Would anybody like to make a motion, Marsha, about closing the meeting? I move to close the meeting. <laughs> any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Thank you very much for coming, you folks. And uh, we hope to see you in person next year. <laughs> Thanks again. So. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.